I mean, ain't nothing like working them with, you know, a thousand decoys and electronic call. That's the first time they've heard that thing in months all across the country, the first one. And I mean, there's, it makes such a difference that you can plan something like this. Ideal conditions on a snow goose sign. Warm, windy, and sunny. And we got all three of those every day we were here. Here we are, end of the season. It's been a long year, six months of traveling. We're trying to end it on a good note. Opening week of conservation season in Arkansas for snow geese. It's something we've wanted to do for a long time. Finally had the opportunity to do it. Uh, our buddy Travis Wissinger, he's got a farm down here. I know some farmers down in this area. He invited us down six months ago. In waterfowl hunting, there's not a lot that you can plan that far in advance. But snow geese in Arkansas end of January is something that you can mark on the calendar in August and September. And, uh, and we did that and it's worked out incredibly well. biggest parts we come down here we do have a few local farmers we know it's good with us they're usually our scouts we call them they put us on the fields uh, weather warming up it's in the 60s every day we were here when it warms up they're no doubt going to be in the wheat fields actually uh, the only fields we hunted were all wheat fields and they truly eat them to the dirt here we go boys Turn over here, turn, turn, turn. Get ready, guys. If they lift up, we're gonna kill them. Kill them! The shot that did it has been that way for. It is crusty and dark around it, so 
it's been it's been like that for a little bit anyways So Travis's friend, he said, I got a couple wheat fields that have a bunch of geese in it. I want you to guys to get them out of there. So we set up in that wheat field the first day. I had a pretty good morning. It gets to the point when you're hunting hordes of snow geese, mass numbers of geese, it's inevitable that you get a feed that's within two or three miles of you. And once that happens, you know, you're done. And that happened the first morning. Our featured product this week is the Beretta Extreme A400. It's a revolutionary waterfowl shotgun, and because of a couple key features, it's the best on the market. The Beretta kickoff technology consists of two spring-loaded shock absorbers inside the stock of the gun. These springs compress upon firing and absorb some of the felt recoil. This feature helps the recoil to stay parallel to the cheek mount and reduce what the shooter feels. The end result reduces the felt recoil by up to 70% and gives you faster follow-up shots. When you're hunting snow geese like we are in this episode, we're not using plugs, we're putting as many shells in our gun as possible. This system is a lifesaver when you're shooting five or more shells into each volley. The A400 Extreme is simple to disassemble and starts with just a quarter turn of the end cap before disassembling the forend and barrel. This year in Alberta, we hunted a lot of barley fields and the amount of waste grain and shaft that works its way into your gun is immense. After five days of hunting, the chambers of our guns were full, but we never had one issue with firing over the course of hundreds of shots in five days. The Beretta A400 Extreme is designed with waterfowlers in mind. Its combination of industry-leading technology make it the finest waterfowling shotgun on the market. It's about impossible to hide a blind in a uh, wheat field that's been ate to the dirt. Uh, we got there the day before with the farmer. The geese were in the wheat. We actually run them out of the wheat field. They just hopped a ditch, went to a, a rolled rice field. As we drove off, the geese were just pitching back to the wheat over this ditch that had plenty of cover for the laydowns and everything. So we went in the next day. We kind of simulated that. The way the wind was, good place to hide the blinds. We put about, about a third of the decoys in the wheat side, hopped the ditch, kind of strung the rest of them out, probably 70, 80 yards in the rice. And when the geese worked, they pretty much worked right up the decoys coming to the wheat field. Wait, kill him. Slowed down about probably eight o'clock. You know, we were shooting a couple small groups, and as the day went on, we got a little more wind. Decoys looked a little better. Birds worked a little better. After we got the wind, it, it really helped us out a lot. They were we were getting them right in our face. Oh my goodness, guys! Get right, look out right out front. Don't let them kill them because this is going to get stupid right here. Look out front. Get ready. Get ready. Kill him. Oh my goodness, guys. I don't even know what to do. Okay, look at that, right out to the front right, guys. You see this? This is where it's gonna be. I mean, if we wouldn't have seen them acting like that, we wouldn't have done it. But you still wouldn't think that, how's that gonna work? You know, are they gonna, are they gonna not wanna go over that ditch? And if they do, when they do go over it, they stay 10 miles up and then just work straight vertical down on the head of the spread. 
or what, but it was either, you know, they got right downwind and they would either come all the way through the spread like you want them and they'd just get right over that ditch like it wasn't even there. There was no difference. I mean, we shot some that fell in the ditch. Like I know I shot a couple of like eight yards and they were falling in the ditch and the dog would send the dog back and there he goes down the ditch and he comes right back and I'm where to get that from. It's night and day difference from where you, you know, they have been and where they haven't. They just create a mess out there. They trim everything down to nothing and it really makes farmers mad out here. You can see why they, uh, they try and keep them out of their fields every day. The, uh, the winter wheat field looks like a uh, baseball field, Major League Baseball field. And all the edges is green and it's like beautiful. And then wherever they've been, looks like the infield. It's all laid out. It's all just, it looks like pure dirt. You know, usually you don't want to drive out in as wheat at all, you know, but it was dry down here. But besides that, you still, you don't, you don't really, farmers don't really want you driving in any crops that are fresh. But he says the geese are so bad that if you're out there hunting them, just go and drive right out there where you want to be. Because you ain't going to do no more damage than they've done, and you got to run them off. And every place that he sent us, I think we did the job for him because they ain't come back to that one field since the first two days. And they weren't, they, they're back there this morning in the one, but after that, uh, after that volley of having like 400 in the hole, I don't think that, uh, I don't think they're gonna be back there for a couple days anyway. We had about 10 locked up, and then all of a sudden they turned. Out of the corner of my eye from the left here, I see 150 locked up. So I pretty much kind of let them know, hey, you know, we're just gonna let this work, see what happens. We're gonna get something here. It's gonna be like yesterday. All right, right out front, they're already lining up on us. It's starting to spin a little bit. I couldn't even, I don't even know they could hear me, because I couldn't hear myself. It was just all of a sudden, and then just every bird after that, like you look through, and from what blue sky I could see, all I could see was locked up birds behind locked up birds. Let it spin, boys. Let, let Blake get some shots from this area. Dude, whoa. Okay, now I'm a little nervous. What in the heck? Are you kidding me right now? Let it happen, boys. Let it happen. All we gotta do is get it. Oh my goodness, they're turning right back over our heads, guys. Get ready, this is gonna get nuts. Ace kennel, kennel. We got them on the ground in the head. Let them keep landing. Let them keep landing until they start landing in our face. These are getting up. Wow, this is crazy. Get ready, get ready. Hold on, hold on, here comes the big lead group right out front now. There's a hundred on the ground, don't even worry. No, they didn't, they're still landing out there. Like I'm, I'm watching. You're ready now. I'm not staying well. Get ready. 
Get ready, here we go. Kill him! And once they got right up in there, I just said, yeah, kill him. And I just, I don't even know that I aimed as much as I rapid fired because it was beautiful. That might have been the best video trip. That might have been the best group of the trip. When you talk about a two and a half, three day snow goose hunt, a lot of guides, a lot of outfitters, they'll tell you you'll have a bad day, a mediocre day, and a good day. Um, it's really hard to string three really good days together in a row. We've hunted for two and a half, and if you were to ask me, I'd say we had a good day, a good day, and a good half day. You couldn't ask for any better weather. You know, to successfully shoot snow geese, you need sun, you need wind, you need warmth. Um, birds are pushing, there's new, new geese coming in on an hourly basis. You know, they're pushing back north, back to their breeding grounds, and uh, we have had absolutely ideal conditions for two and a half days down here in Arkansas. You know, hopefully the, the luck continues and we have it again here in Illinois when we head back home and the season opens in another three days. If it doesn't, you know, so be it. But you could not ask for a better string of weather and, uh, and, and better success than what we've had down here at Travis's place in Arkansas. Come on, come on. There you go. Give me hugs. Give me hugs. Okay, set, set. Give me knuckles. Good job. Good boy. Good boy. All right, seriously, go. You've waterfowl hunted a lot. You know, ducks, honkers, snow geese. What's your favorite? Uh, right now, snows. <laughs> Why? Because uh, it's just been in your face action. We've had sunny, windy. Uh, what else? We've had sun. We've had wind, we've had dry ground. We can drive wherever we want. We're not fighting mud. What are you doing? We had birds too. He's out there running, you know, running around. He keeps saying, he can run out, man. That's that rice field over there. I see him gaze over there. He's been telling me about it for four days. And I don't want to feed. If he wants me to fly him out there on a broomstick so he can kill them all or what, but 